I picked the same uh, feature from there. So we, we have had parallel career. We, you, you can remark that uh, uh, pear is still a little bit blonde. I was, my dark hair has, complete, has completely disappeared. Uh, that's uh, the, the difference. Uh, so we are from the same generation. We are both computer architects. Uh, in the mid 90s, we, the, we were with uh, Matteo, uh, the international alibis uh, in uh, program committees. Uh, essentially, that was either pair, either me, or, or Matteo, or Bob, or three, or sometimes the three of us. But we were the international alibis uh, at that time. Uh, we, s we spare also our first visible, very visible work uh, were on caches. Uh, but we had a difference. I was essentially on for uni processor and pair for shared memory. So, and I continued to work on a uh, single thread. Uh, then I received this invitation, say, hey, perspective on future, the future co of computing. Hey, I don't know. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, for single thread, for maybe for single thread I, I can have directions. So for example, compressed cache. Uh, caches. But uh, Pear knows about that also. He, he, he has contributed to that also. So now uh, what I have done more specifically is something like value prediction. And uh, say, hey, value prediction, what, what, what is that? So, uh, value prediction about it's about removing data dependency. It's not a new idea, okay? Uh, maybe in this audience there are many people that have heard about it uh, about 20 years ago. So you just take a sequence of instruction, you predict the one the, in the middle, and then the dependence uh, disappear, and by miracle you you have more performance. So, and there were a lot of papers on, on this area from, let's say, 96 to 2002. It is very efficient. It's surprisingly uh, a high number of results are predictable, sometimes up to 90% of the result, of the individual result for interactions. But it has not been s implemented so far. Why? So that comes from the, w the conventional wisdom on value prediction. It adds complexity, power at any pipeline stage. First, you got a critical path on prediction, and this is completely intractable. I, I will show you. Uh, then, you have to repair on, on misprediction, and also that's also intractable. And of course, it adds huge extra complexity in the execution core, and the execution core is already very complex. You have extra register files, ports for prediction writes, and to read the, the, uh, the register file for validation and you, you have extra data pass for validation. So uh, that was the conventional expert wisdom, but a few years ago, and in the framework of uh, my ERC grant, uh, with this young guy, which name uh, is Arthur Perret, uh, we demonstrated that this conventional wisdom is not true. Okay. So we revisited uh, value prediction. So first, getting rid of the long critical path. So which critical path are you speaking about? Uh, to predict, you observe the past, to predict the future. And you use past value computed by the, the instruction that you want to predict. And that leads to intractable critical path in many value predictors. Uh, just to illustrate that, uh, the FCM 
predictors as was proposed by our friend Janos. Uh, you, ta you take three or four uh, of the last values that have been computed by this instruction, and you read a table, you hash them, and you read a table uh, uh, to get the prediction. But that's not the whole story. From instruction fetch to instruction commit, uh, in many cases, you have more than 20 cycles. So the last value has not been computed. So the real thing is, is here. You, got, you, you have to pick, let's say, the three uh, last speculative values to align them, to hash them, and to read the table. And the critical path is here. And that's not possible to do in, in a single cycle. But uh, often you are trying to predict instructions that comes every, every cycle if you have a short loop. So that's not a good thing. So my past in branch prediction uh, showed me that uh, you could use speculative uh, global branch history to predict branches because it's always correct when you are on the ri right path. And you do, don't need to, sp to search the speculative window. And we have done it also for indirect target <coughs> prediction. And that's some kind of value prediction. So just transpose uh, the ITH predictor uh, to under all instruction eligible for, for value prediction. And that's what we have done, proposing uh, the VTH predictor where you index table with um, a hash of the uh, PC and the global history and different uh, lengths of global history. So I, I do not detail. But what was Vitage really about is just that global branch history is not speculative. So the result of the previous instance is not required to predict the result of the current, uh, uh, current instance. So you are not searching through uh, the speculative window, so you have not prediction critical loops, you can take your time to predict. It may be five, six, seven cycles. Uh, but that does, does not predict everything. Uh, uh, it essentially predict uh, instructions that have repetitive uh, usage of the same value. Uh, there are another uh, scheme that is really interesting, the instructions that, pr uh, that produce data that uh, uh, form an, a geometric theory. No, an, an arithmetic theory, okay, with a stride. Okay. So here you got uh, a more complex thing. In fact, in, in fact we, uh, there is a championship of value prediction just uh, 10 days from now. And uh, I came with this design, which does not uh, need the, uh, the previous instance, but just the number of in-flight occurrences that will be presented uh, just uh, at the workshop. So that's, we have removed one part of the conventional wisdom on value prediction the intractable critical path for prediction. Now, <laughs> we want to get rid of the complex repair, uh, prediction repair. So, uh, you have two solutions. Either you do recovery at execution time, but, and that's called selective replay, you reissue uh, instructions, uh, that allows you to limit the misprediction penalty on each uh, uh, value misprediction, but it's very complex. It's a complete mess to, to implement. The, the, the data dependency chains may, might be arbitrarily long. You have 
another solution, which consists in, in squashing the pipeline at commit time. It's simpler, but it's slow. It is just as a uh, branch miss prediction. You are losing maybe 20, maybe 30, may maybe 40 cycles on, on each miss prediction. And the problem is that uh, no la you, you do not get large benefit on every miss pre uh, every predicted value. Here I have a, cha uh, a chain uh, of uh, dependence. I break this dependence, but no chance. The second operand of I6 was, was not available, so I do not get uh, any benefit. So we have to decrease the overall uh, value mispre misprediction penalty. Uh, and a very simple, simple formula is uh, your penalty, a global penalty, is the number of means prediction multiplied by the average uh, penalty. So uh, aggressive selective replay address this term, but the other way is too, is too complex, so we address this term. So let us validate at commit time, we will have high penalty, but if we enforce the use of uh, value prediction only if we have very, very high confidence, uh, much more than 99% in the order of 99.9%. So to do that, we, ju we could just use very uh, wide counters, uh, saturating counters. Uh, in fact, we, we, could, we can also use uh, probabilistic counters uh, where you increment your counter uh, probabilistically on a, on a good prediction and you reset it on an incorrect prediction. And with that, we limit, we uh, we limit the coverage uh, of uh, of prediction, of course, but we ensure very high accuracy. So, and here we get some miracle, okay? Uh, doing this late validation and recovery, we get high accuracy, so the, the total misprediction pe penalty is less important, impact, uh, but what is really important is that we validate and recover at commit time, and in order. We do this in, o in order. So the out-of-order core is untouched. Uh, okay, the out-of-order core issue execution right back. Okay. We are limiting the, the modification in the front end and in the back end. So, oh, and w uh, m there is more to come uh, at the championships. Uh, in fact, uh, all instructions are not equal. It is not, it's not the same benefit to predict loads or a simple load value, predict, uh, value operation. So we, uh, we play a lot with confidence. So at this point, we have uh, eliminated the critical pass. We have eliminated the repair, we have eliminated the, da the data pass in the execution, uh, uh, the extra data pass for validation in the out of order core, but there still remains some complexity, essentially on the register file. So getting rid of the uh, register file. So the hidden cost of, uh, uh, of value prediction uh, is here, okay? We are predicting and we are writing the uh, the result of the prediction in the physical register file. Uh, we are reading the, uh, the physical register file to do the validation. So we are adding a lot of ports on the physical register file. And the problem is that uh, on a 
six issue processor, you already need 12 reads and six write ports. And, uh, and we are adding a lot. Uh, we are going to uh, 20 read and 14 write ports, uh, assuming that we are fetching eight instructions per cycle. And that's a, a disaster because uh, the, comp the hardware complexity of the um, register file is something that grows with the square of the number of ports. So let us try to, to cut that. So, but we can bank the register, uh, the physical register file. In fact, we are taking part of the fact that prediction and validation are executed in order. So we can do assign the result of uh, instruction to, conse to co of consecutive instruction to consecutive banks. And that, then we, we can bank the, uh, the reserve file. And that works for the prediction, but also for, uh, for validation. We validate the, the instruction in order. So that goes to, uh, if we are adding only two read and two write, to write ports per bank for prediction and validation. And then it's reduced to 14 read and 8 write ports on the physical register files, which becomes, becomes a, a little bit more realistic. Now, there are some hidden benefits on, on value prediction. With value prediction, many instructions with predicted appearance they can be executed immediately. Even without entering uh, the out of order uh, execution core. And with validation at commit, the predicted instruction, you have not to execute them in, uh, in the out of order core. You can, be, you, you can execute them just before retirement, just before commit. Okay. So that can be done outside the out of order execution core. And we are removing a lot of instruction for, from the out of order execution core. So we can, we can hope to reduce the, ex uh, the issue width in the execution uh, out of order core. So less wake up logic, fewer ports on the physical register file, less bypass logic, faster and less power angry ex execution engi engine. Uh, so we that we have published uh, ISCA, Microtopics, ACM talks. Uh, so and we reduce the out of order engi engine complexity uh, and bring back the number of ports to the 12 read and 6 write ports um, originally. So, every <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and even you got a uh, value prediction that allows to reduce complexity. I just for, for fun, one curve. <laughs> Nobody cares. Okay, uh, what's left uh, for us? Uh, essentially, convince the industry. Intel, ARM, or others. Uh, but it seems that a few groups in industry are considering a value prediction for their uh, future. I don't know. Okay. And that's it.